Heiko Tietze. I live in Germany. Of course, the name sounds very German. I'm from Berlin. Right now, I'm living in Berlin. I'm hired as a UX mentor at the Document Foundation. I'm doing all usability related stuff for LibreOffice. means uh, uh, to get the real visual design as well as uh, to optimize the workflows and uh, uh, coordinate uh, everything behind the scenes. Yeah, it was uh, pretty interesting. We uh, developed in the last version um, a new control. It is called the notebook bar, which is a blank canvas actually. It is meant to be uh, as a, uh, a thing to get more uh, flexibility for the interaction for the UI. Today, or in the past, we had um, just the normal toolbar at the top where you can click on a button and you, uh, you start an uh, action or so like. And it has a few uh, means to uh, start the action and some configurability, but it is limited. And it has also some drawbacks. Drawbacks as um, the uh, increasing functionality leads to more clutter on the toolbar. It gets uh, difficult to find the right function and the amount of uh, features that you have there. So the talk was about how to overcome the limitation, not really the limitation, but the drawbacks of the classical toolbar with a new concept. It is one implementation to the uh, thing that the developer realized with the blank canvas of a notebook bar. And we as the UX team try to make it really nice with a conceptual group configuration in this uh, notebook bar. And I, my talk was about the reasoning behind this um, implementation. Um, psychology is like every other study, you are uh, moved slowly to a specific direction. You are going into a, a kind of thinking about uh, everything. And uh, psychology is about methodology and about uh, clear approaches to questions, um, statistics as well. So. What is special in, 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 in my uh, background is that I maybe uh, try to analyze the question in a different way uh, compared to uh, developers that study informatics. On the other hand, um, you know a lot about uh, perception, which is for instance important for the notebook part which I presented here, uh, you know uh, how Gestalt laws are um, what's the thinking is about the Gestalt law, and said you can have a law of proximity, which is not a big deal to know for everyone else, but you have some knowledge here, perception and uh, memory there, and processing there. So it's a lot of um, basic things that you know about a uh, human being. And I think it uh, contributes a lot to understanding how people interact with things. The other aspect is, of course, also uh, that you know how to approach to people and how to uh, talk to them, how to do a survey. It's uh, sometimes not easy to just ask a simple question, do you like it or do you don't like it? It's uh, often better to uh, uh, come from the uh, from behind and ask differently and do an implicit uh, way of analyzing the information. The good aspect on usability and UX is that you have a, a very varying uh, topic. You uh, sometimes you do talk to. Often I do talk to people and uh, uh, chat over uh, channels on the internet like Google Hangouts or Jitsi or uh, also on uh, forums and the like. You have to observe uh, the development to look for other as well companies and uh, developments to compare what they are doing, how the uh, mainstream is going and to see if it makes sense to 
b introduce some new stuff into our project as well. So it's there's no specific uh, workflow that I have every day. Usually I start to read emails, of course, like everyone else, and I look through all the news feeds and check the emails, uh, news on the feeds, uh, read what's going on in the world, and uh, in particular on the uh, technological areas. After that, I um, used to read the uh, bug tracker. I get a lot of uh, information from, from Bugzilla. If our users complain about features or request new ones, it's important to integrate it into a concept, which is the most important aspect, in my opinion, about usability to have a good concept behind the new functions so that it's, um, and it makes sense to implement it and that we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time another uh, question comes up. So days go on and uh, I also try to um, implement things myself, which takes as a newbie a lot of time to find the right place in the code where you change, for instance, an RGB value to make things more appearing. First of all, it's not a challenge, it is uh, also a, a big advantage. So the community is so amazing that it's not a challenge, it is a good point for us. Uh, if I ask um, people on one of our social media channel, uh, channels uh, about their opinion, about a, a tiny piece on software, do you like it in this way or that way, just to get an impression about normal uses, I get a huge response quickly and I can base my suggestions for developers on what users say. So the community is a bless for us. On the other hand, of course, if you would say uh, design work with a large community, it uh, leads often to something just called bike shedding. You start discussion which are endless. People have opinions, they uh, like it in, say, um, in their own way, and the other one uh, shows up and uh, talks about a different way. It is um, a challenge because usability makes this, uh, improves this uh, process by, for instance, persona. If you uh, do not talk about your personal um, uh, feeling about a feature or if you like a specific color, for instance, uh, but um, uh, change your mind into a, a different person, what everyone can do then it is much easier to find a conclusion. We at LibreOffice have uh, such personas defined and we talk about Benjamin, our uh, novice user, which is uh, just a boy, and it is easy to say Benjamin would do it in this way and we can in our team think about yes, that's true. And I can uh, step back a little bit from my personal position and think about what would Benjamin do. So, yeah, community is great and I love to work with these people.